recording yes so every month as wow meets now virtually uh, we were wondering what we should do and uh, since wow for the last 5 years wow women have been meeting wearing sarees and handlooms across the country and learning more about the weaves we thought we should dedicate this and and what a beautifully put together set of uh, speakers we have today uh, we have mr prasanna hegodu from the desi trust uh, desi and charkha we have kausalya satya kumar who is a sari enthusiast and uh, an encyclopedia of textiles and we have anju mondal who is of course everybody knows as the chief nurturer of the hundred sari pact i'll come to deeper introductions in a bit Uh, but i just had a little piece that i wrote when i was thinking of this conversation and what to do in context of this conversation so i'll just read the connection that i had put together so it reads like this this saree is a garment its culture and heritage the iconography the feminine energy indian and rooted the layers of ecosystems the makers and the weavers the commerce and the communities empowerment and stories carefully curated beautifully crafted in all of that is six yards and more love today and forever so with that um, i'm going to quickly introduce wow to those of you who are joined for the first time and i want to know a little bit about wow wow kitty is a uh, women orbiting women it's been a uh, Five years now since it was uh, set up. It's a charity. Uh, for those of you who've been part of WAV for so long, format is very simple. It's a kitty format where women get together one uh, Wednesday every month um, and actually meet at one of our homes. We throw open our home, and we actually have collecting thousand rupees per head put together now for the numbers that we know, thirty lakhs plus, and we've supported over thousand women. uh it's fairly simple this goes into 0% interest loans that go out to these rural women entrepreneurs and we have a 100% repayment ratio we work with rangde now and interestingly enough desi charkha which who we have here mr prasanna with us today is actually one of those that we invested in recently uh so now let me come to our standard lineup of speakers um we have anju who's going to be moderating this conversation who very kindly accepted to do that because i was struggling i said i have these three people that speech and so encyclopedias in themselves i said i don't know what i'm going to ask them and as i was struggling anju very uh, sweetly came forward and said listen i will be the novice who wants to listen from these two experts on two uh, sides of the ideologies that exist So Anju, as everybody knows, is the chief nurturer of the Hundred Sari Pact. Uh, what a lot of you don't know is she's also founder of Web TV. In. She's a master crafter, storyteller. You know, she's a TED speaker. She was on TED uh, Nahi Soch, and of course, everybody knows that uh, she was the person who was gifted the sari by Shah Rukh Khan, who said, "Aapne <laughs> maaki yaad dila di." Yeah, I had to I'm say not that. I'm going to live that time. down. I'm not going to live that down, am I? <laughs> not of Shah Rukh Khan fans, but Anju is somebody who's been telling the story of every one of the sarees and gotten women around the world to tell these stories as well. So it's a pleasure, Anju, to have you being moderating. Thank you so story. much, Shreya. I'm very, very happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, we have Kausalya, who is a textile and a sari lover since the time she was a child. So since her childhood days, she had dreams of working in textiles, and she made that come true. she was an entrepreneur for a very long time before getting into organized retail which is where she is currently she spent a lot of time in pub india and of course the uh, future continued with being in that space and um, our stellar lineup of speakers also includes and i i wish i had enough time to introduce uh, mr prasanna but i'd rather hear him speak with an amazing theater career which started off in the 70s uh, he has worked in multiple language theater put together various theater platforms also became an entrepreneur he led the handloom satyagraha more recently a textile activist who founded charkha which is a women's cooperative in sagara and now works across various parts of um, of uh, karnataka it's actually the largest naturally hand dyed handloom fabric producer in india for those of you in bangalore who know desi uh, charkha's products are available in desi and myself i'm a proud owner of some of those beautifully handcrafted pieces that desi puts out 
He has won the Mahatma Gandhi Seva Award in 2018 for his work in this space, and the Kerala Sangeetha Nataka Academy's Ammanud Puraskaram, which was again for his work in the textile space and the theatre space. Mr. Prasanna, Namaskara. It's a pleasure to have you and to hear from you. And now, Namaste Hanif from us too. Namaste, Namaste, from us too. Namaste. Thank you so much, Priya. Thank you so much for having all of us here. Thank you. Hand me over the baton to Anju. I'm going to go on mute. I'll come back for questions. If you have questions, you guys can post them as you have them, and we'll also take them uh, as as we come to the close of the conversation. Anju, all yours. Take it away. Thank you. Thank you so much. And hello, ladies. Uh, so lovely to see all of you here. Um, I'm told that all of you wear saris. I've actually been for a couple of your uh, meetings. Uh, I've been invited to a couple and I've seen the bevy of beauties in those gorgeous, gorgeous saris all the time. Uh, I thought I would actually uh, smack damn start with the times that we are living in. It's a pandemic. We've been in lockdown. Uh, I don't know how many of us have been dressing up. I don't know. Uh, We've all now realized, and I, I think this, 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 the power of the pause that we've had in a lockdown, a pandemic, where um, things are looking abysmal around the world. It's not just our country, but around the world. Um, and of course, we speak from a place of privilege where we say that we are safe, we are healthy, we have clothes to eat, and uh, we have uh, food to eat and clothes to wear. Um, and that, I think, for most of us, most of us here, I, 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 I can say for sure, have enough in our wardrobes to last two lifetimes. And I was just wondering, on the one side, we have this uh, problem of plenty in our homes. And on the other side, we've seen how the migrant labor has suffered. We've seen how handicrafts are suffering. We've seen how small businesses are suffering. We've seen how creators are suffering. We've also all heard about the weavers. You're already connected to Cherka and uh, to other uh, NGOs. And you already know that the, uh, the weaver, the, the farmer, the, the, the dyer, the embroiderer, the, the craftsmen are really, really suffering because most of them actually get paid only after their product is sold. It's not an assembly line production. It's, uh, it's a one-on-one one -on -one production. And I was just wondering if I could throw this at our esteemed panelists, actually. On one side, there is this question that I have asked myself, as I'm sure many here have asked, do I need more? Do I need anything more? <laughs> And on the other side, I have been, and I, as I'm sure a lot of people have been, I have been supporting in my own quiet way, a handicraftsman here, a small business there, writing a couple of checks out to people, uh, just tidying them through this hard time, but this hard time doesn't seem to be closing. So if I can start with Prasanna, how do you see this dichotomy? We want to help, we may not want to have many more saris yet, as of now, and yet we must help. We must help. How do you, I just want to get very quick um, starting conversation from both of you and then we'll deep dive into this. Uh, thank you, Anju. You. Uh, you have raised a very pertinent uh, question. We are going through a, uh, a time which is uh, going to demand a complete shift in our attitudes, in our uh, economy, in our uh, lifestyles, everything. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy to be amongst women uh, and good-looking women. <laughs> and, uh, you know, even before uh, the pandemic came, for almost five years now, we have actually been telling in the in the shop, not to buy too much. You know, there is in fact, in the South End shop, there is a poster which says, you know, don't become a, a consumer, you know, buy only that much that you need, but tell your friends to buy handlooms. Yeah. Actually, the, uh, the need of the hour is that everybody, we should make everybody shift to 
the handmade i would say the handmade which which in in, in home and craft oh, sure. everything because this is a much larger question i don't think the economy that we have had so far is going to last very long you know it needs a very very serious uh, shift in uh, thinking but that does does not mean that we reject them actually mm -hmm. the system that was developed by them by the big industry should now be given over to the village uh, thing so that we produce in an environmental friendly way and we become a better society which uh, you know tackles the problem that anju has been talking about the disparity no. So, you know, I, if I can just interject here and just say that between the two, uh, the economy and, and, and the, the, the maker of a product are, are two important agencies. One is the consumer, us, uh, for wanting that. And therefore, I'm going to actually shift to Kosi very quickly. Uh, Kosalya, sorry, we call her Kosi. Uh, her name go is ahead, Kosalya. I'm sorry. But, no, no, uh, call me Kosi, please. Okay, okay. I'm going to talk to... I'm going to shift to Kasi in, in just a second and ask her how retail comes in because here we are saying we don't want more. We may not want more right now. We're sort of questioning our choices. And as Prasanna says, can we shift that choice to handmade uh, more and more? Can that demand be shifted to that? And how can we shift that demand? I've of course done my bit huh, in 2015. I've got many women to buy sadis. But how can that, that was that was a flippant remark, I know. But how can we shift this demand? And therefore, therefore, what is the role of retail? The second agency I'm going to talk about is government. One one agency is of course demand and the customer, the second agency is the government that can actually make bring a big change. But Kosi, retail. What is retail uh, thinking at this point? So basically when Prasanna said handmade, of course, I mean uh, for me, like I said. Handmade is something that has a heart. It is mm. what keeps the fires burning in a lot of, lot of homes across the country. So, like he said, if we can encourage people or, you know, educate people and make people aware to buy handmade is definitely one avenue of keeping this tradition, the craft and the handloom alive. Mm. The second thing as a consumer, like you said, you rightly said that, you know, yes, we all have plenty, but I would say whatever you buy, buy mindfully, you know, know what you're buying, value what you're buying and, you know, pay the right price. All these things, you know, make a huge difference in the entire industry as a setup. So when you say, how does retail come into the picture? See, commerce has to be meaningful for it to continue for a long time and for the entire uh, chain to go forward. So commerce is very, very necessary. How this commerce can be adapted to the current, current situation is also something that all of us have to take cognizance of. Like, you know, each one of us buy one sari, and if that is the end of it, I don't think that is going to complete the entire chain for the weaver or his family or right. anyone who depends right. on it. Right, right. So there has to be a way, a channel where this chain or has to the wheel has to move continuously. Mm -hmm. So, like one avenue is like what Prasanna said: tell your friends. But otherwise. How does one reach out to a larger population? So I don't want to call it retail. I would call it, I mean, there are various avenues, a cooperative society, uh, NGO, an organized retail player. It can be multiple avenues which reach out to the customer. So I think organizations, whatever they may be, small, big, large, yeah. organized, yeah. can definitely play a role in reaching out to the public to understand what handloom is all about mm -hmm. and why one should probably make a choice of buying handloom at the end of the day choice is one's own yeah but yeah probably yeah so you because, know, in, on, on the sorry yes you were saying 
I would say don't stop buying, but also don't stop at buy. Mm. Mm. So there you is know, a lot I've more. I've said this happens. often on the hundred sari pact. We are all connected, and I yeah. use this hashtag. Actually, we are all connected, and I really did mean it. Not only we are all connected as women telling our stories, yeah. uh, wearing our saris, and telling the stories of our lives, but also the backward and forward linkage of this connection. Correct. Right. I mean, when when we buy, when we uh, when we um, when we appreciate, and I think that's what you're saying. That you know, not just buy, not just hoard, but yeah. understand the value of what that exactly. is that has been yeah. made. And I think Prasanna also said that. Um, and I think it comes from, to my mind, you know, during the hundred sari patch. I'm going to tell you this little um, incident. I had met a weaver. And he's and I was talking to him and I don't know Canada. I don't speak Canada, so it was it was sort of a translated conversation. But I speak, uh, and and the body speaks. You know, he was sort of droopy, uh, and I said, you know, what do your what does your son do? Is he also a weaver? And he said, Ile, nay nay. You know, I don't want my children to be weavers. And his son, in fact, was um, an upholstery guy. He used to do the sofas in people's yeah. homes. And he said, I don't want my child to become a weaver. There is nothing in this for him. It's not a good life, madam, he said. And I've always pondered on that. I remember his eyes where, where a, a father says that I don't want my, my, my son or my daughter to carry on this, this legacy and this beautiful legacy of creation. Where, when a weaver says that we've gone wrong somewhere. We've oh. gone utterly wrong somewhere because... Yeah. What we have not been able to do, even in this thing of beauty, and you know, it's very romantic to say how they make this beautiful thing, whatever. Yeah. Livelihood. Have we given them the dignity of the exactly. livelihood? You so know, have we been I able to, to generate yeah. respect for what they do? And this I'm going to leave open to both of you to take in so terms. What do two, we do to change this? So my two points on that. So if it's an individual customer who goes, buys a sari and comes back, they're finished. They've got what they wanted and that's it. But if somebody like a Prasanna who runs a cooperative or just to throw an example, women we who have uh, done a lot yeah. Yeah. or a larger organization, if they can bring about change by way of, uh, I know some organizations are working towards it, uh, like, you know, Bring an organized setup, bring probably 50, 100 weavers under one platform, provide mm -hmm. them with a space which is well lit, which is well aired, which has proper toilets, everything that they can come to weave and go back. So then they feel it's a job that they're going to, that they're going to work somewhere, come back and they get paid for it. Right. Then there is a certain dignity that comes along with it rather than you know in their own homes most often if you go really interior in the villages most often uh, they don't have proper light their roofs are leaking they yeah, don't have yeah. toilets and that is the condition that they're weaving in so if that change is brought about i'm sure mm, the next mm. generation will also want to come and work yeah, like, because I mean, look at we're, organized... losing, we're losing, uh, we're losing generations of yeah, because memory just, almost. Yeah, just you know? like how you said about a weaver. I remember very an incident that stays with me forever. When I went long, long back, maybe this was about 15 years or so. Uh, I went looking for a particular weaver to do a particular design. And when I went and asked him, he said, why should I do this? Because mm. you want it. I want to be where you are currently. I want to be the person who's asking for this or I want to be the person who comes by car and does the things that you do. It is not, uh, I mean, it is not uh, wrong for him to have that expectation. Not at all. Oh. To have aspiration, not at all. Let's, let's, let's throw this open to Prasanna who actually works with uh, the yeah. weaver. Prasanna, yeah. throw some light on, on, on this for, you know, like I said, it's very romantic. All of us sit and think they're weaving this beautiful thing for us and how, you know, we're buying, buying this and we're helping them. But what is the ground reality? What are these weavers thinking? 
you know what i was referring to when i said let us uh, spread the customer base i was looking at the situation since independence since independence we are going to the people telling them that the poor weaver is suffering so buy some poor weaver is uh, you know is hungry buy something what we want to do now is not talk of the poor weaver but we talk of the fabric of the future you see hand loom is the fabric of the future if we have to save the future for our children if we have to save the environment if we have to save the planet there's no way except to gradually and systematically i'm saying gradually i don't mean you know breaking things gradually come to the hand loom mm. so when i say don't buy too much i'm not trying to hit at the retail base i am a retailer what yeah, of course is you know have the confidence you see hand loom can never do the sort of publicity that the other sector does what is our publicity our publicity is the trust you know people should trust us that we are not cheating them we are not telling them lies and we are not even telling of the poor guy i want to tell them that look you are future and your child's future lies with hand loom so you better become an activist you see so mm -hmm. two people have been wearing it and helping the uh, weaver now you can do it even more gracefully you have the capacity you have the wherewithal don't give money to the weaver yeah become an activist you know tell your friends tell your friends to uh, you know buy hand looms you see that's what gandhi ji did for example can you imagine that man almost in a couple of years managed to hit at the textile industry in uh, london you see it's mm -hmm. it was not possible let's say 2 years back even but after the covid after all this terrible crisis people are seriously thinking come on i think there is something wrong with what we are doing and so this is the time to actually confidently go to the customer and say trust us we will not yeah. only a good son but we will also give you good life for the future yeah That's you know I, as much as you talk about the future and and i love the fact that you've linked it to the future the sustainability aspect the the environment aspect i've also used the hashtag called um, we wear our history and i really really believe that uh, we will be poorer we will be poorer if we let these uh, skills and this art uh, languish we will be a poorer people you know yeah. in in ethos in just it you know in history in ethos in who we have become uh, we, we will be poorer because we we would not have uh, respected our history i mean these are traditions these are multicultural influences you know from persia from china from from the countries surrounding us uh, in weave in design in color in motif that we have uh, almost imbibed right i mean some of us uh, and, and and really brought it sort of into sharp razor sharp focus for me in in um, in 2015 during the hand sari pact when we actually each one of us sort of looked at our sari and said exactly okay, exactly what what is this you know yeah. if it's a if it's a bridal sari i mean just the we were sitting there and weaving an elephant into it for strength for the bride weaving a peacock for the grace weaving a gazelle weaving the, weaving the strength and the and, and and the ferocity of a lion into into a bridal sari it's humbling i mean i bow down so, my head yeah. to so to exactly. to the weaver to to the creator of all of this and and we are right now we are talking about weavers but i'm also talk i'm also i'm also going to talk about the tires the the farmer the grower the 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 yarn all of that i mean the, just just making this beauty of of six yards um come alive for each one of us in our wardrobe and i love the fact that while i was talking about the history you already connected it to the future immediately and said 
our future depends on this. So, see, you were saying something. Yeah, that is exactly what I was saying when you said all these things about the sari. I mean, I won't even talk about the sari. Uh, it can be even fabric. It can be yeah. just textile. textile. Sure, sure. So, I've always felt this very passionately and very deeply that our country has probably i mean i can say definitely the largest repertoire of crafts and textiles in the world and when you say everything that they do like weaving the peacock or the gazelle or the elephant imagine how his heart beats when he every time he passes that web you know actually there is a very simple process in weaving i don't know what they call it in the local but i know in tamil it's called achuponakibde. So what they do is when a sari is ending and they have to start the next warp, they join every single thread of the previous one to the next warp. That takes immense precision and dedication and concentration. So when you see them do that, I mean, I feel that product has a heart. It is a living product. So for me, I can only think of it as that. So and why, the legacy carries on. It's almost like a yeah, legacy. Yeah, on. it is yes. just from one to the next to the next. Beautiful. So for me, beautiful. that is the only thing that I can think of or to tell people, this is what your country mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. This is what Prasana. Yeah. you have to do. I mean, if you want the future to be something that your children will look back, like Prasanna rightly said, <clears throat> your children to look back upon and feel proud that, oh, this is what we have. Handloom and handcraft is definitely the way forward. Yeah. Prasanna, I'm going to come back to you and ask you the question again. Uh, because we're here we are sitting in our beautiful drawing rooms in our gorgeous sarees. Um, uh, but you, you are in touch with them. What are they saying? What are they saying at this time? You know, the the biggest problem I see for a weaver is they have lost their heart. They've lost their confidence. We have killed, their, killed that confidence. You know, a weaver, every time any one of you go to them, they just start cribbing and saying, Sir, kuch to kijiye and all that. You see, I just can't see that happen. Yeah. In fact, uh, you know, there are lots of things. One, we are talking about these uh, very fine saris. Fine saris are great. I mean, it's, it's one of our best traditions. But also, we should talk of making the coarser fabric fashionable. Sure. See, you can sure. make coarser fabric fashionable. A good-looking woman will look good-looking in a coarser sari or a finer sari or anything. You see, Sir, I'm very tempted to ask you what a good-looking woman is, but we'll let that pass for now. Okay, I'm going to let the, I'm going to come right back and put you in the spot on that one. But 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 please carry on. But please carry on. So, you see, because I'm I'm saying this, uh, you know, that can actually uh, make a change amongst the weavers. You know what is the problem with weavers? The weavers the caste and the moment they become a caste they just get stuck in the groove there is no social dynamic happening in the weaving community mm -hmm. some states it has happened in Orissa for example Dalits have started weaving even in Tamil Nadu certain parts of Tamil Nadu Dalits have started weaving you know this dynamic is what is going to lift that uh, uh, that trade mm -hmm. people should come into that and all that so anyway if I ask you, you've already said uh, one is to, you know, to, to be careful, okay. because he said to be careful of what you buy. Uh, it has a heart, handmade, and therefore patronize. I mean, we must build patrons out of um, ourselves and, our, and, and the community to patronize handmade. If there were two, three immediate things, immediate things, we have uh, how many? 50 on this, 50 participants. So leaving, uh, leaving us 51 now, about 48 of us, what can we do? Three things that we can do next week to make a difference. Let's just break it down. It seems very overwhelming, you know? 
I also sit in my drawing room and say, now what can I do? And then it seems so overwhelming, I don't do anything. Right? Prasanna, back to you. And then I'll, I'm going to give a little bit of time for Kossi to think of this. Three things that we can action straight away. Okay, not a week, fine. Straight away. Whenever, st I, whenever I, straight away you know, is good for everyone. You know, you Question. have an organization which is five years old. You've been wearing saris, you've been helping people. But actually, I think you can become activists in a more fundamental sense. You know, it is possible. 50 people can build a world. 50 people is a large uh, group of people. And, you know, for example, Uzramma, who built uh, Dastakarandra, or the other yeah. person in uh, Dastakarandra, now all of them came in because they loved the sari. They wanted to wear the sari themselves. But then they went beyond the wearing of the sari. They still wear very good uh, saris, but they've actually now gone deep into the sector. It's actually fun. Anybody, any of you want to do that, we are very happy to let you come in and do what you want to do. You know, you could dabble with uh, prints, block printing, wood block printing. You could dabble with uh, uh, dyes. You could dabble with, you know, uh, for example, uh, you know, the Muslim women who do uh, the Kasuti. So, you know, there are so many things and even inside Bangalore, I mean, if you just get out of Bangalore, of course, there are, there's a, the whole world is open. I would like uh, you people to become activists. It is great fun. It is uh, very fulfilling and it doesn't take too much of your time. You know, whenever you go for a picnic, you go to a Gule Gudda instead of going to a stupid five-star hotel or three-star place or... <laughs> You know, every time you go, you and, and incidentally, every weaving cluster in this country is at the backyard of the finest civilizational site in India. Did you did you know this? For example, next to Thiru Have you ever pondered on that? Have you ever pondered on that? Why? Because it is these civilizational centers which actually made the trade possible for the weaver. So Badami True. is a great civilizational center which has been there for a thousand years. Next to Badami is Ilkal and Gulek Guda and all that. Next mm -hmm. to you have, uh, you know, Koppal. I mean, I can go on like this about Warisa, yeah. about uh, Maharashtra. So you will be actually, when you go to see a, uh, see a temple or an archeological site, just go behind a few miles Ask people, you will find a handloom center there, you will find weavers there, cultivate them, develop them, bring a couple of saris from them and sell it to somebody else and you will have done a revolution. Lovely. I have a friend who works in the social sector and actually works in Kopal for uh, women uh, who hemorrhage during childbirth. I mean, it's that specific, the kind of work that she does. And it happens in the rural sector all the time. She got me a beautiful sari made by weavers in the cluster from there and I, I cherish it, I cherish it till today. But I think what you're hinting at, not, not really hinting, you're, you're stating, is that we must engage. We must engage uh, to bring any kind of change, to, make, to be a change maker, we must engage. Kossi, over to you. Two, three things that we can do. We, when I say we, I mean us women today here. I mean, oh, you're talking about us women here. So basically, a couple of things. I mean, and a good, uh, and, a good and a good looking gentleman also. <laughs> so for me, I feel uh, it should not stop at handmade only in saris because there are a lot of things that we use which we can buy handmade or handloom, and these are simple handlooms. Your bed linen, for example, the towels that you use, your face up. These are all very simple, basic weaves that, you know, is produced, it can generate, I mean, it's a cycle that moves on. It's something that you want repeatedly. It is not ornamental. It is very basic. In my perspective, if someone can do something like that, where all us women, even 50 of us, buy our home linen, our towels, our face towels, etc. Another thing, 
as an organization of wow if like i said if we can bring about a setup where we give them dignity of labor mm. where they come under a single roof and they can work with dignity and leave that i think is a dream that is a dream that you know like i said they should be motivated to come here and work because for them it should be that pride i work in this organization i weave i sit on the loom and i weave and i get paid so much and i'm proud of that that mm -hmm. should be the situation that i think we should bring about change too that is the road i would look for ahead for this i won't say community for this entire generation of people who are still in hand so systemic change Personally, we need, we me, need I mean, systemic feel, change yeah it's a huge like it's gradual it is slow but i think the seeds have to be sown at some point mm -hmm. and as women yes if we buy like i said one sari two sarees is really not going to affect or going to change his life in any way it will only make you more vain and say oh yes i own another sari and that's about it so so you know this brings me to i'm going to tie in with what uh, prasanna also said about the future innovation yeah product innovation we, of course product, yeah i mean product innovation thank you innovation in in in, in not just how they they weave but uh, also what they weave because exactly. if we must if we must make it relevant to today's needs for example it's raining in bangalore where i am sitting i live near indranagar it's pouring would i wear a cotton or silk sari out no i'm 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 just giving you very real life things a lot of women are busy they want something you know you're talking about bed linen they want something that goes into the washing machine uh they want you know they want a sari that's easy to wear easy to dry uh when we talk about innovation prasanna you actually work with them is are you are you thinking innovation are you are they willing to innovate in the process procedure you know of 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 weaving and of what they make who is going to tell them what will work yeah it's a very good question <clears throat> we need to innovate mm. what happens generally especially in the government circles the moment you talk of innovation they will think of introducing of, uh, of you know something to run the thing but actually innovation in this sector is innovating to go back mm think to deconstruct and deconstruction is not easy it needs systems we have the system they don't have the system yeah For example we have been trying to set up a natural dye institute at hegodu it has taken us 5 years we need scientists we need a lab we need all that you know so there's a lot to innovate and uh, of course this discussion will be too small one i don't want to get into the details of uh, innovation but innovation is necessary also innovation in marketing i'm thinking marketing. some innovation in marketing oh, yeah. must be done must you, be done yeah. and i'm going to i'm going to turn to kosi to lean in on that one yes it, yes sir uh, just just a minute sure i'm sorry yes uh, no um, there is one fundamental difference between marketing this and marketing let's say a television set sure it is produced heterogeneous and has to be sold to the big cities a television is produced uh, in a factory in a homogeneous manner and so this difference is what is making it all problematic and we have to we can solve this problem you know we should mm. yes. uh, so what about you as as you know if, if you've played sosa for for um, a, a, an enterprise uh, you know the customer uh, it style is sometimes maybe frivolous but also changing innovation in design uh, they want different things kuch naya chahiye you know how yeah. uh, every yeah, 10 so years is... this every 10 years there's an innovation and then kosi tells me na 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 this happened 50 years ago anju so i'm just tying in everything that uh, prasanna was also saying that you know uh, what we see as innovation sometimes these weavers have already done woven been done with yeah. Uh, 50 years ago, but innovation from a point of view of marketing, from a point of view of design, and anything else that you view it as, Kosi. So, 
So basically, innovation and design is a must to keep the customer happy as far as I'm concerned, because you're saying every 10 years they want something new. As far as I'm concerned, every day they want something new. Okay. <laughs> every day they come in and say, oh, kuch. I mean, people will say, oh, you have something new is the general question that customers ask. Right. Uh, so that's an ongoing process. Somebody has to constantly innovate. And like I said, it's a, it's a, it comes full circle. If you see just like something that you saw 30, 40 years back has come back in fashion, in, I don't know, in style, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah. But as you far know, as so, so often, right? Bada border, chota border, bada yeah, print, yeah. chota print, all of that yeah. keeps happening, yeah. right? But as far as innovation in marketing is concerned, yeah. I think a lot of it has already, is already happening. If you look at the amount of uh, weaver craft melas that happen and they, the weavers or the producers, as I would call them, because I'm not even talking only about handloom saris, I'm talking about craft and textile as a larger perspective. Yeah. So even there, they've become very tech savvy. So today, if mm. you meet him, tomorrow he will send you 20 images for you to choose from. He's becoming savvy about the market. So if you go there and say, can you make me this? He's open to do it. Mm -hmm. He's already changing. So... That's how to make that more organized is what one should think of. I don't yeah. think there is a lack of market awareness amongst the weavers. At least 50% of them are very market aware. They can very be astute, sitting in the back of beyond in Bengal. But he knows exactly. He might not know a word of English, but he can understand what you want from him and he mm. can deliver it to you somehow or the other. I and therefore, and therefore recognizing that. Yeah. 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 I think that's yeah. great innovation in marketing for themselves. They and technology. Great. I mean, technology yeah. ki jai ho, right? In the last few years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, we, I have people selling on WhatsApp saying, Moam, this design, this combination. Yeah. Do you want this on the pallu and then this on the... Exactly. I mean, harnessing yeah. technology for themselves. Yeah, um, yeah that's and, exactly and, what you I'm know, saying. For me, for me... It shows how hungry they are. Yeah. So if you look at their the, adaptability yeah. is so much more than yeah. what you're giving them credit for. They are hungry for you to appreciate. Mm -hmm. They are hungry to earn a livelihood. They are hungry for that respect of, of, their, of their hands that, that look weave. look at the social media as a handle, Anju. I think every weaver or producer in the remotest part of the country know how to use social media today. Mm. They are happy to, you know, I personally, I think every day I get some two friend requests from some of these producers. They want, so they know they are delving deeper. And if not him, he has a son or a daughter who can quickly bring him up to speed on something like this. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if, frankly, I am, Hardly tech savvy as compared to them. <laughs> so yeah. marketing no, but more power innovation. to them. Kudos. More power yeah, to them good. for doing Fantastic. that. Absolutely. So innovation in yeah. marketing is happening. But product innovation is something that we see, I feel right. we have a lot, lot, lot to catch up on. Because today sari might be, you know, possibly the effects of the 100 sari pack is still a ripple. It is there and people are still eager to wear sari. But I don't know what it will be 10 years hence. So what can we offer that generation 10 years hence as a product, which is handmade, handcrafted and handloom for them to appreciate it, wear it and want to wear it again and again. Lovely. I couldn't so, have ended it better. Lovely, lovely. Prasanna, yeah. anything that I haven't asked you, but you want to lean in on. I'm going to just leave the floor to you before we hand it back to Shreya. Thank you, Kosi. That was a wonderful summing up of what you said, really. I mean, we have to, we have to sort of champion this cause and we have to make them Atma Nirbhar uh, in terms so, of the technology, in terms of... Small, if you people have the time, a small example on an Insta Live that I heard recently from please, Jaya Jaitley. Please share. Please share. From, ja from Jaya Jaitley. Uh, I think when she was 
in the political scenario there was a village in kerala that made pot just ordinary terracotta pots for cooking and because people stopped using pots the entire village did not have anything to do and the women went into prostitution as a way of earning livelihood then she went in there and they did product innovation and now they are one of the largest uh, group of women who are making lampshades murals large murals to order uh, jewelry bangles everything out of terracotta so somebody who is making a pot you can only ask them to work with that medium you can't ask them to go make something else completely alien to what they know right so i right. think that kind of product innovation is what something is something that one should look for lovely i'm going to hand it over to um, to sir to prasanna and kosi meanwhile i know that uh, shreya is going to ask us think of a beautiful sari story but prasanna anything that i have not covered that you 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 want to pitch in with you want to speak about please uh, i just want to tell you about uh, a particular problem in karnataka mm. we have almost lost on the technique of sizing okay sizing is uh, you know giving the ganji ganji yeah. to the yarn yeah starting the yarn, the yarn. Yeah. and because of that Uh, we are not able to really weave uh, sarees because sarees need single yarns and not doubling yarn. We are now going to put a lot of uh, work uh, in introducing, reintroducing uh, sizing, so that we can produce simple cotton sarees. For example, the Udupi sari. Mm, yeah. The beautiful sari. It's a very simple sari. and it is it is such a fine cotton and it sits so fine on the body uh, but it is not available because uh, we have lost uh, sizing technique so i would say that in karnataka there is a need for some you know you talked of technology for example yeah sizing is one area where we need to do serious uh, thinking uh, mm. do you think uh, exchange of Uh, knowledge from one state to the other will not help mr prasanna in something like this because well, tamil nadu they do, do a lot of sizing as far as cotton sarees are concerned no, even even across the border in andhra they do sizing in fact a lot yeah, of yeah. go to andhra to do it but you see we used to do it ourselves in fact there was a whole community of sizers they were called by a special name yeah so all that is lost i think we should concentrate on that because unless we do that mm. we will able to produce those fine cotton sarees yeah because mm. a saree does not have to be elaborate a fine cotton saree can be just a plain saree a plain weave actually is the best weave to wear on a daily basis with no extra weft extra warp technique or any embellishment a nudpi saree pretty much is just a plain weave yes and because it's 80 count super fine cotton that's why it works so well Yeah. Thank you my esteemed panelists. Thank you so much for leaning in on uh, all that we can do all that is uh, the, the you know status quo and how we can change status quo in the world of handloom in the world of sarees for all the women uh, you've heard us uh, I hope that you will uh, at least you will take away an appreciation for all that goes into making that saree. and uh, i'm not even mentioning the elephant in the room government will to make things change uh, i'm I, you know so because uh, you know it's a ram bharose kind of thing so which is why i said what which is it uh, which is why i said what is it that we can do how can we contribute i always brought it back to us rather than letting the government do something because I don't know what the government just just this government for your only or, or the next will do about it but back to Shreya Anju just for your information Smriti Irani has cut salaries in the textile corporation etc recently So when well, you said the elephant yeah, yeah. it is a huge elephant <laughs> I mean you know that, that that's for another day that's right you know yeah. what the government can do and what the government actually does is for another yeah. day we we've all read you know he knows he's working in the field 
over to Shreya. Thank you, Shreya. I hope, I hope, Shreya, I did uh, uh, half a job, half as well as you would have done. Oh, please. I was sitting in my door. I would listening to you guys and, and I couldn't, I just, I was just, you know, gleaning everything in and there's so much to take away from the conversation, from the stories to what we can do. I think the biggest thing for me is if I can be an activist, I can be an activist today and now and talk about handlooms and weaves and do something. I can do something. And that that's, that's all that matters, right? I think that was my biggest takeaway. And there's so many stories in this. Uh, but I'm quickly going to move to the questions, otherwise everybody's going to kill yes. me. Uh, yes. The first one is, why can't we move like the French to pride rather than charity? We need to be proud of handlooms and treat them as a higher pr priority than these big name designers or retailers. We should have a connect with the weaver and the story of the weave. And what does this require? Consumer behavior change? Question mark. So I think this is the first one that we have. I, you know, I just have a one thing. What's stopping you? Whoever's asked that question, what's stopping you? Exactly. You my know, my uh, answer too. Why? What is stopping you to go? What is stopping I mean, you from, are... from doing something uh, that, that will bring this change? And I'm sure Prasanna will lean in immediately because like I said, he's in the field. But what's stopping you from doing this? I mean, uh, you know, the way we tell history is so different, right? The way we, the way we, um, narrate history is and then the French did this or and then the Americans said no 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 one person started and then <laughs> history was made and then history yeah. was made so I'm just going to leave it at that but Prasanna over to you uh, can you repeat the uh, question please quickly um, we need to be proud of handlooms and treat this as a higher priority than the big name designers or retailers. We should have a connect with the Viva and the story of the weave. What does this require? Consumer behavior change? Question mark. So it started with saying, why can't we move like the French to pride rather than charity? Uh, you know, first of all, it uh, needs uh, confidence. I just want to keep uh, harping on the same issue. Did you know that India still has the largest number of working looms than the rest of the world? Yeah, I didn't know that. Somebody wants yeah, to become true. an entrepreneur. You know, tomorrow there is nobody can supply naturally dyed cotton handloom like us anywhere. China can supply silk, but cotton we and we can only do that. So there's a lot of possibilities. You know, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of these startup groups should start thinking of handloom as the uh, thing of the future and not just of uh, the past. Uh, you, know, you see, so, so we should think of handloom as the future industry. It is an industry which is not going to have too much of profits, but it is going to have a lot of stability and a lot of... Uh, you know, fun. Absolutely. You know, if I may humbly submit, please, uh, and it, this may actually answer a couple of other questions also. How many of us have made the they made uh, the attempt to deep dive and just open our cupboard and learn more about the saris we have? Maybe we can begin there. Didn't you already dig up that thing in 2015? No, I'm saying how many of us. I'm, I'm not talking about myself. But you know, maybe maybe we can start doing that. And when you yeah. begin to appreciate this, uh, like like uh, Prasanna was saying, that's when you begin to engage, and that's when that confidence of that viewer yeah. increases to to realize that you are actually in appreciation for the, for the masterpieces and for the and masterpieces are not always the one lakh uh, saris. Exactly, exactly. You know, that's masterpieces are it, it's it's you know it, it's I sometimes say it's like electricity. We take it for granted. No, it's magic. Yeah. Isn't it magic that something grew in a farm and that something is now here and beautiful and you're wearing it? It's magic. Yeah. Shreya. Is, uh, how do we, so it's connected to this one and it says, how do we instill a feeling of pride in the weaving community? How do you send them a message? Um, you know, weavers, for example, you know, Charkha had huge problems with weavers' confidence. But once they realized that somebody was actually making a living, the other weaver came to us and said, Sir, hum bhi mm. Yeah. 
so so there is no other way except to create this thing you know it won't happen in a day it will gradually happen and then once they get the confidence they go all out as uh, you know kausalya was saying you see they they are willing to learn that they, they know uh, social media that they, they want to do it but that confidence it will have to be triggered you trigger it and then things will happen yeah so prasanna my question here to you is do you feel that providing them an environment that they are comfortable working in like you have done rightfully bringing them under a common umbrella giving them the confidence that yes i am there if you need help you want a little money to buy your yarn we are there if you need something else to do we are there by providing that umbrella don't you think you are creating or building that confidence in them exactly you talked of the umbrella you know the dream project for me i have been pushing it with the government i want to tell all of you is next to badami is a temple called banshankri i am sure you know about banshankri yeah, yeah banshankri is the goddess of all the weavers and that's also a great uh, civilizational site we want to set up a marketing center there state of the art marketing center where even foreigners should be able to come place the order get the fabric woven of the specification and buy it this is in fact the dream i have and and once something like that happens the rest will take uh, you know yeah start. it's like how many of them go to japan to order something because it is handmade or handcrafted and come away because they have created an environment where that pride in the craft is there so somehow i feel a common umbrella is something that can help do that rather than one individual trying it all by them you know i also think that it's a, it's it's a, it's a bit sick, uh, cyclical this thing yeah uh, there's a there's a very lovely hindi uh, phrase takya nusi khayal you know old fashioned right yeah. so i remember when i started the 100 sari pattern everybody knows that it you know it was not meant to be a movement it, it became right it was not meant to be a, 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 anything larger than what i was thinking about in my drawing room but it became ever so often i was asked and why are you being so old fashioned why do you want women to wear sarees and i was like um you know <laughs> being modern is a state of mind Yeah. really and and not I not also not, is a state of mind not and not the clothes you wear really and 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 i hope that we will start recognizing that soon yeah. enough if not if not now um and when i say cyclical i also feel that you know uh, we are a generation i know that my generation for example you know in my parents home there used to be these lovely crochet dollies and these lovely um you know cushion covers etc and then we said oh my god we got to be modern all of this is to go right and and quickly all the modern stuff came in and now i thirst i hunger for maybe like i said i need that innovation it needs to look better perhaps um, you know how those uh, uh, textile uh, sofas were covered with covers the sides so that they wouldn't get they wouldn't get dirty, dirty? Uh, i'm sorry i have a very middle class upbringing i i, I if you don't relate to that then you're not I'm then you're not my you one <laughs> oh, there you go <laughs> but, but that's what i'm saying so it's cyclical and maybe maybe just just you know maybe we'll come back to that i'm hopeful yeah of course we are not, not to the cup, not to the kapra on the sofa but you know in, in the shape of a beautiful rug on, on on the sofa a beautiful woven rug on the sofa a beautiful I sari i would i would go with the kapda on the sofa too <laughs> yeah yeah a lovely throw for example yes shreya back so, to yeah no bossy wants to say something sorry no no shreya shreya can take it from okay so uh, the next question is uh, but they will need money now how can we help them now is it for me is this well uh, we have been doing that in fact as a pro in the process we have accumulated some 80000 meters of 
uh, handloom fabric and uh, we are now launching a campaign asking people to buy it and uh, send it send money if you want if you can buy it now buy it otherwise we will deliver it to you and all that it is you see they are in a bad shape actually in karnataka it is so bad first they got devastated because of the floods in krishna yeah. you know the most of the weaver uh, clusters are along the river krishna they got devastated and even now the government has not done anything about those uh, broken houses and now because of this covid uh, they don't have the jobs so if the looms can run it will do a great great uh, help uh, you know my my simple answer is they need money now let's give it to them if you can spare some money send it their way yeah i think a lot you know of there are people working with there are people way. working i'm sure kosi and i'm sure prasanna can connect us with the people who are in need uh, pick a person see if you can see them through 2020 do it yeah i know i mean that is yeah but it's oh, like i said anju yes we can do it i mean 50 of us can gather and do something but then that is only you are helping a small number Yes, yes. But no, I, I mean, guess I'm, that's that's the best one can do given the situation. I mean, you know, I, I'm just saying that instead of waiting for the grand plan, yeah, yeah. to emerge, if we can yeah, do something absolutely. now, let let let's do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure Antara yeah, is I'm, listening in. Yeah, and I'm sure there are there are ways for us to you know collectively contribute. So uh, we will surely find them. I have a lot of questions, and I want to do justice to them. So, uh, how can we buy directly from viewers? Can we bring them here for exhibitions, not their products, but them, and they can bring their own products when they experience people buying and admiring their work? That will surely instill pride. This is uh, the next one. uh but shreya isn't that already happening through the various craft bazaars and melas that happen in every part of the world country almost throughout the year it might have stopped now because of covid 19 but otherwise uh most people can connect directly because all of these are weaver to consumer platform yeah Absolutely. If and when physical meets can happen, we can have a weaver series where we have weavers from different states come over with their products, come showcase the process, and bring their products. In fact, it can even happen remotely in the current times. Zoom meets with them and then enable web ordering. Okay, noted. That's all I can say. <laughs> um, so my question was, and I know I get this a lot because I was the youngest when I started the hundred sari pact, and a lot of my friends, it's connected to the old-fashioned question, uh, looked at me saying, "Why do you want to dress older than you are?" You know. So how do you engage the youth? I, I still am perhaps the only sari wearer amongst you know my friends who are the same age as me, and so how do you engage the youth? Because Uh, yes, we all want to buy, wear, see, handloom more. But what is it that we can do that encourages them to buy, and uh, not something that some designer created and put out there, because that creates a furore usually. Yeah. But what a handcrafted person um, or a weaver is making out of their hands. So basically, I don't know, Shreya. I don't know if this is. Uh, uh, so because. i personally have always bought simple handloom fabrics and made them into clothes that i can wear throughout the year i mean sarees are something that not everybody can wear 3 365 they want something so what prevents one from buying handloom and making a crop top or a spaghetti or a pair of trousers or a skirt or a dress and it's happening a lot of people even online sellers etc i using like something like what prasanna is making it's simple handloom what prevents you from buying that fabric and converting it into a simple shift top i'm sure so that is the only way they can move into handloom then from there the progression that they want to go to wearing a sari 20 days in a year 365 days in a year is a choice i guess one should leave to them but i'm sure i want to lean in on is, this I'm sure this is this one small drop in the ocean that will lead them to that progression. Is what I'm thinking. I don't know my point of view. I would say. I want to lean in on this. Um, my daughter was eleven uh, 
when uh, the Hunter Sai pack started. Uh, she's she's a regular 11 year old wearing tees, wearing shorts, wearing anything, anything, um, yeah. wearing, uh, you know, Western, Indian, whatever. Uh, in the past few years, she has reached out for the sari. Not because I have told her to, because she's seen me in them. She's seen how much I've enjoyed it. She's seen me tell stories in the sari. She has seen value in that sari. And when I say when I say she, I'm talking about the younger generation also. I'm sort of extrapolating here. And I'm saying, and this is what the 100 Sari Pact has taught me amongst the many, many, many things it has taught me, is that stories are powerful. You tell your story, you wear your story, you live your life as honestly as you can. And there is no way that they will not realize how much richness there is in living your life in that honesty. My daughter, the first time that she wore the sari, she wore it uh, ankle length. She wore it with her van shoes with Snoopy on them. Yeah, and I she, see a and lot she of wore it, doing And she wore it with a t-shirt yeah. because she was 11. And it's okay. Yeah, it's yeah, fine. Exactly. Yeah. She, she chose a sari of mine and she wore it and it was perfectly fine. And not once did I tell her, this is not the way you wear a sari. Yeah, I have I a feeling, a I have people. a feeling, yeah, I have a feeling that if, you know, we, we, this, this, this question of what will the next generation, what are you doing? Are you wearing it? If you're not wearing it, how are you expecting them to? If you are, if you are showing how comfortable you are leading your life in a sari, uh, there is no way that they will not be influenced. They may go away, they're teenagers, they're young, they'll come back. They'll come, they'll back. come back. Exactly. I think they'll, they'll come, come back. back home. Yeah. I, I have something to say. You know, most working women would like to be both old fashioned and new fashioned. They would like to wear uh, garments and also saris. We, uh, in fact, before the COVID, had started doing uh, fashion shows for the young. Uh, Prasad Vidapa had actually taken the lead for us. And it was an amazing success. We had done a couple of them. We were planning much more and then this whole thing happened. Actually, young people are very interested in uh, handling. Not, not in large numbers, but there is a small number which is picking up. They want to come in. And all of them want to also have a sari. But of course, when they are working, they want to have their jeans and pants and you know, handloom top and uh, maybe a kurti or something. But I think that ties in with the with what you said that it is the future. That this this younger generation is extremely woke about sustainability, about environment, about carbon footprint. They are now far far more aware than we were at their age, and therefore they want to lean in on this. And I think it's a beautiful, beautiful sort of symbiotic relationship that is now now forming. And we should uh, the more we can nurture this, the better. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh God, that was, uh, that was amazing. There are lots of comments saying really enjoyed the session and never heard of the Udupi Sari. But this next one is Prasanna spoke about the block printing and as such, I would like to get my daughter involved in it. Uh, how do I do that? They just have to come to Hegodu. There is a direct train from Bangalore. We have an ashram there for people to stay. And uh, it's a very nice uh, place because it's on the Western Ghats. Just come, bring the child. They will love it. It's a, there's a lot of space. They can do lots of things. Let Amazing. Them over and bring them. Yeah. yeah. Antara is saying next wow trip Hegoda. I was about to say that. I said Antara, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Let as soon as it opens up, I think the first meet we can uh, we can have it there. Uh, how about stitch saris? The youth where the sari is actually a pair of pants. All kinds of designing is possible. I think we discussed that. Um, we're all activists and influencers in our own circles. We can do something. Really enjoyed it. Dignity of labor and add of innovation to that with awareness of handloom, uh, industry of the future. Um, handloom, I'm creating a website. We're bringing handmade to the marketplace with pride. Uh, like there are classes one can take to learn painting. There ought to be classes where maybe one could learn to weave one's own handkerchief, which is what we'll perhaps go and do in Hegodu. Uh, also, unfortunately, the designers take the whole credit and the weavers hardly benefit. Do you, any of you want to comment on that? Uh, I won't say that is completely true all the time. 
yes there are the dark side and the bright side of that there are a lot of uh designers who actually work alongside weavers and give them credit because i've seen there are fashion shows where they give the weaver also comes onto the platform so i think it it will emerge eventually uh people will also realize that there is a creator but you i mean you can't say that the designer does not have anything to do with it unless he ideates that person cannot create so i think it's a synergic a relationship so it's both like yes they probably should give more credit to the weaver i think that will happen slowly once they start realizing it and mm-hmm. all these are emerging trends i see it a lot happening nowadays where you know they call the weaver who is actually woven it and say this is the guy who did it etc i've seen that happen so i guess that trend will also move forward it is emerging uh you know i want to reframe this question a bit the problem really is that there are a lot of weave, uh, designers who don't understand that hand loom is process driven you know if yeah. they give a sketch or something it doesn't work they should first understand the process the, they should understand the weaver's mentality the weaver's mentality is tied to the process to the particular loom to the particular weather to the particular uh, cotton the 100 different particular things and uh, of course we designers are changing there are designers who have now become uh, yeah. process driven they go and live there stay there spend more time earlier they used to just fly in from calcutta or delhi and spend 2 hours and uh, go back but things are changing now and that is what is going to give the weaver the credit more than just personally be brought on to the yeah so prasanna i would definitely like to add to that here this is a bone that i constantly think of picking because i feel institutions like nift nid etc who bring out these designers don't pay attention to this particular detail i also face this problem constantly they only have a design in their head but to translate that design to the area of work whichever cluster whichever area whichever region they are working in they first have to be in that area understand the process and then convert it into a design so i always feel this education to designers have to come from the institution where they emerge from that i have actually spoken to some people i said why do you forget about this why do you feel that it's just a piece of paper their powerpoint or whatever software they have they bring out a design and say okay this has to be done it is not that easy yeah i agree you know i i i, I and and it is changing like kosi said that you know there's sanjay garg that does thing there are lots of designers now going and spending time but but this 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 puzzle that needs to fit in this yeah. understanding that needs needs to happen on both you know from the weaver on what is it that the designer is trying to conceptualize and therefore the designer being able to do this this process yeah. requires communication and i think that yeah, is like that I is said. what we have to yeah. stop really yeah. Yeah. you know in this there's also we should uh, i just want to mention it here there are a lot of people a couple of them have actually set up buffer zones in the sense mm-hmm. that they are creating uh, in between people who understand the designer and then work with the thing you know yes. yeah that is very important because otherwise this connect is not going to happen this connect is very difficult mm-hmm. the language problem there are problems of time there are problem of so many things and i also think that what prasanna said adding add, adding to this uh, and just closing this for for just a second uh, was the fact that it's the future uh, you know he was saying that uh, handloom is the future sustenance and uh, environmental uh, you know just just you know just sustenance really i think the designers are waking up to that yeah they have to there is they no have to. and they and therefore this backward linkage will get yeah. stronger but anju if you said i mean if you look back when i said it is it is the cycle of life i think india as a country if you look back 50 60 years whatever we wore was always sustainable it was ecologically friendly it is when things changed in the west 
and then we aped it that things changed otherwise a lot before polyester came everything was sustainable i don't think there was anything people bought five sarees 20 sarees whatever wore it constantly till it tore then it became a gamcha then it became something else what is not sustainable about that Mm. every part of yeah, but, life you know that's sustainable. that's what they say right i mean the youth is you know the youth is wasted on the young they say and and like so for the consumer also first you have to go and ape something and then you need to realize the and then you begin to realize the worth of what you already have and yeah. i hope that that cycle kind of begins to turn unfortunately unfortunately that realization comes to the youth when somebody on the other side appreciates what you have that mm. is the most unfortunate part so maybe one part of the innovation is taking handloom global yeah it is going global i'm not saying yeah. it's not but how much and then bringing it back how basically soon? yeah yeah i don't know if it exists but maybe a platform to feature weavers weaver stories and a way to take back what people feel about uh, what is woven and delivered in terms of a video narrative maybe thanking a, a simple video message that is taken back to the weaver which says i'm wearing what you wove and we really appreciate your art and we are grateful for you could also go a long way uh, there's a question now on uh, are there any internships in handloom for students uh, that they can take on so Uh, even in karnataka there is a uh, handloom uh, technology center in gadag which trains people they, they give a diploma for uh, students but it's really not very good salem is better the institute yeah salem i was about to uh, say that yeah salem uh, is better but the ideally centers used to be good used to actually involve uh, women involve uh, people from outside to train and all that but now all gone to seeds it's a very sad thing yeah ideally i think uh, students or whoever want to intern pick organizations that have been doing tremendous work dastakari hat samiti dastakar andhra there are so many organization involve yourself uh, why should it be a course stay there study there live their life understand their culture what they do on a daily basis i don't think there could be a better internship than that yeah I think there's a, the there's a there's amazing internships uh, available with yeah. NGOs and there are lots yeah, of NGOs is, in the handloom the, space. Yeah, lots of NGOs. I mean, lots of them. Uh, there I are the I must tell you. There is, yeah. Sorry, I must tell you. Whenever you are in um, near Nagpur, please go to Varda and please visit this uh, mother. Sure. You know, it is the center which was started uh, way back by Gandhi. she was there but now there is an amazing woman called vibha uh, vibha mishra or vibha somebody she is running it and they have done excellent work in every aspect of the handloom amazing work you know so there are actually lots of institutions you know to go and yeah. see and then take it forward um before i close i just want to say thank you to all three of you i think this evening's conversation can go on and on we can do an entire series uh, talking about series anjus just started her podcast of the 100 sari pack so everybody who has a 100 has, yes. has a sari story yeah please uh, you know feel free to send anju a note on any of the platforms or i'll connect you to her if you have a and sari fact, story i would i would uh... request prasanna if you can put me in touch with some of the weavers i would love to have their story on the podcast too i think it's it would be wonderful to have the maker's story also thank you thank you shreya for that um i think i think this um evening has been so much more than a conversation around sarees i think we've touched philosophy i think we've touched uh, you know learning growing nurturing sustainability i can go on and on with the little takeaways and the larger conversation that this was thank you so much to all three of you for agreeing to spend your evening with us i uh, really really grateful and i hope we'll be able to do a lot more work and come to hegodu and learn more and you know hear from all of you yet again thank you so much uh, thank you amazing gratitude from the heart and uh, antra was pointing out to her daughters because both of them are wearing sarees today and they uh, you know i saw it
Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so much, Shreya. That was a wonderful session, and yeah, yeah. and you didn't expect Can it to go on for so long either. So <laughs> yeah. Can I have everybody switch on their cameras because uh, I need uh, to take a screenshot of all of us uh, for social media. And you'll send it to us, right? I will. I will. I'm taking screenshots. I'm taking photos. I've so got all Lovely. of them ready. Yeah. So can we have all of you? Um, all the good-looking all women. All the good-looking women. And the one man. Yes. And the one. Man. The one good-looking gentleman, of course. Three. Yeah. Three men. Three men. Oh, we have this. more. We have more. Yes. <laughs> we do, we do. So I'm going to, um, I have two pages, so I'm going to take. <laughs> okay, uh, clicking. Smile, everybody. More, more, more. Hold on. There are two screens, so I have to do this twice over. I like how Antra is doing the namaste. I'm going to do the namaste also. <laughs> uh, second screen. Everybody smile once again, please. going to make this into a collage and we will post it lovely and yes thank you so much thank you thank um, you Shreya. thank you thank you, thank you everybody thank you thank, thank you everyone thank you everyone thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you gorgeous awesome. thank you. and looms yes thank you thank god you. bless